Today in Matt's class, I'm gonna show you how to draw an awesome profile portrait. Welcome back. Today we are going to take what we learned in a previous video. If you haven't seen it yet, I did this really cool video on how to take the proportions of the human head that we drew from the front and how to do it as a profile looking at the side. So I kind of went over those on the board, but what I want to share with you guys today is how to take that and apply it to drawing a real portrait with light and shadow. So I've got my setup here today and my model didn't show up that I had scheduled. So instead I just grabbed a random stock image online. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to draw this using my charcoal pencil. Here we go. All right, so first things last, I need to draw in my gesture and I need to just kind of map out, just really think about my page real estate and how I'm going to map out the head. So in addition to proportion, I really just want to kind of think of the overall sizing. Now I have this blown up a little bit larger, so I might not do exactly like have this much space here and on the sides here and here, I'll probably give a little bit more room than that, but that's just so I can see it clearly as big as possible. Here we go. I'm gonna start with my basic cranium. Then the jaw is gonna be over on the side here. Here's my center axis, kind of comes below that, and then it's like this, this cute little head. The eyes are halfway from the top of the head to the bottom of the chin. The forehead comes forward just a little bit, and then the brow comes in. nose comes out and then mouth kind of comes forward like this there's the lower lip there there's our chin jaw going into the neck connecting edge there. So we still want to think about our connecting edges. The eye. Here, just kind of looking down a little bit. Just barely make out where this nostril is here. This lip. A little bit right here, a little bit here. It's crazy hair here. That is crazy. The ear, if I take the eye line over here. A little higher than the, than the eye line, and it's actually a hair lower than the nose line over here. See, the, the shoulders aren't perfectly across. They're actually angled slightly like this. The shoulder is kicking up a little bit, so I want to be aware of that. Like this nice, I don't know if this is a, some kind of necklace. I don't think I've seen one like this where it hangs in the back like that. Or maybe she's just being artsy. Yeah, it's a very, very thin strap dress. Oh, is that what that is?
All right, so there is my basic proportions that I'm mapping out. I'm gonna get more detailed as I go, but I wanna do something a little more tonal for you guys. So here's kind of your line quality here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add some connecting edges just to kind of show you how I would implement those. Can you see already the connecting edges, how it really is kind of helping the voluptuousness kind of around the figure? So what I'm gonna do now, I wanna get more tonal, so I wanna get more contrast in there, and I wanna go from kind of this line art, and I wanna have a little bit more value and almost a little more photographic. I'm gonna take a stick of compressed charcoal. This isn't gonna be as exact uh, because it's a big clunky piece of charcoal, but this is gonna help me just really kind of get some of my dark darks hammered in there and just kind of get some of these darks cooking, just some of these, these shapes. And I can draw with it on the side a little bit so I can kind of get these shapes in there quickly. Notice how I'm using the edge of this to kind of control hard edges and soft edges. I kind of press around areas to kind of get a little bit more of a harder edge. See that where I have a harder edge on this side, but it kind of makes a softer edge on this side. That's all gonna kind of get lost once I start pushing some of this around anyway, but What's interesting about this photo, it's got light coming from this side. The background is pretty even keel, but to kind of help that for the drawing, it's definitely darker on this side, so I'm gonna keep the background lighter on this side, and because it's lighter on this side, I'm definitely gonna add more tone to this side. So first I'll add just kind of just some basic light and shadow. I don't have as much control, but it's easier for me to use my left hand to kind of throw this in than to try to do it with my right hand. And then I can't see like what I'm doing, you know? But if it's in my left hand, I can just see what I'm doing a little bit better. Still some solid precision. Oh, and I want to just want to follow, if I can follow that edge. Right now everything is super kind of chalky and it's really rough looking. So the next phase, you're gonna swatch this and you're gonna go, oh my gosh, what is he doing? It's gonna look like I took everything that I just spent building and I'm gonna ruin it. But it's for the greater good in the grand scheme of how everything is gonna roll. So what I need to do now, I need to smooth this out. This is just way too crusty and it looks like the side of a brick or something like that. It's just way too much texture. So you can use a chamois, which is a really expensive little piece of leather, or you can use a really inexpensive piece of paper towel, and it does exactly the same thing. I'm going to kind of soften out areas, and it's going to, in some cases, it's going to get um, charcoal all over the place, but that's good because some of those highlights I want to control where those highlights are and I want to be able to erase out those highlights and that's going to help me quite a bit.
putting some like all over here. It's getting junk all over, but you know what? That's okay. It's all part of the greater good. Smooth this out. At least it's smooth. And right now everything is going to be a little too smooth, but that's okay. It's part of the process going back and forth. I'll try to be delicate with this, but again, it's going to get all over the place. There's nothing you can do. When you're done, typically. Uh Smoothing out a lot of the charcoal. Is a charcoal portrait ever fully you know, smudge proof? No. Um, sometimes what people will do, they'll use what's called fixative. It's like hairspray basically. And they'll spray it over and it, what it does, they call it sealing your drawing. It doesn't fully seal it. It'll seal it a little bit so that the charcoal dust won't fall off and smear off. It helps a little, but it also does two things. It instantly changes the tone of your drawing. It'll make your drawing a little bit more yellow and it'll make it a little bit darker. Sometimes that doesn't matter, but the thing is you don't, when you spray it, you don't get to choose how much of your paper is darker versus how much of the charcoal is darker. So sometimes you'll spray it and you'll be like, oh man, it looks even better now. Sometimes you'll spray it and you'll be like, what the heck, now it doesn't, it doesn't look as three-dimensional as it did, or it, you know, something about it will just be different hmm. and, um, and not the way you intended. So that I don't like. And then also over time, I mean, it's just, charcoal isn't, very, um, it just doesn't have longevity. So it's a really cool way to learn how to draw and you can get some really cool things happening for you in a short amount of time. You can like just get some really cool shading and it's a lot of fun to do. It's a little messy and you do it on newsprint. So it's not something that like is meant to just last a long time, but you can get some really cool effects and that's why you just, man, you when you're done with it and it looks amazing, take a photo and that photo will last forever. So right now everything is way, way, way too smooth, but that's okay because we are gonna chisel it right back out. So the first thing we're gonna do, I am gonna take my kneaded eraser. Before I go anywhere darker, I need to go some places and go lighter. Kneaded erasers are cool because as you're working with it, it kind of cleans itself and it also doesn't leave like little nubbies all over the place. And also you can kind of make little sharp points to chisel out specific areas when you're working with one out of habit. Sometimes like when I was in art school and I would listen to my, my teachers during like a demo or something like that, the more you play with your eraser, like the, the warmer it gets and the warmer it is, the more functional it is. Oh. If it's just been sitting dormant or in your case for a while, it gets really hard. It, you can still use it, but it's then it's just a hard eraser. But when you mush it nice and soft, you can really get some nice soft erasing in it. Also, when you're mushing it around, it cleans itself. And if you've got junk all over your hands and fingers, it'll actually clean your hands. So you can just be sitting here listening to your teacher, not really, I mean, you're just, it's just something to do with your hands. And then you realize, man, my hands are clean now because your eraser just cleaned it. And then it cleans itself. It's, it's pretty magic. It's pretty amazing. It's just a little bit brighter under the brow here. A little bit brighter. There's this nice chiseled area right here. In front of the eye and then right under the eye here. Graphite can't really do this, can it? Uh, graphite just isn't as dark. Graphite is more silver than it is dark. Charcoal is like black, and so you can really get just a really nice range. Charcoal is kind of difficult because even when you're sketching lightly, like, whoa, I mean, it's black. It's, it's down there pretty dark. But if you draw lightly, you can kind of, it's not pressed into the paper as hard, so you can always hmm. erase a little bit better. We're gonna go darker with some of these areas, but this is just kind of helping to chisel out the nose. The cheek has like this highlight here that kind of comes in front of it there, above the mouth, right under the nose, lower lip, chin. This gets a little lighter right under here. There's a couple areas, I'm gonna pick these out with razor sharp details later, but there is just kind of a nice light there. There's another one. Here, I'll get more razor precision a little bit later, but just 
kind of pull out a few. This ear, erase out a little bit more light. See how it's making that ear pop out? We'll get more details like with the earrings and stuff as we go. Stronger highlight. For the hair there. And then we've got this light under the, the jaw here where it kind of transitions into the neck. Kind of the vertebrae here. Chisel this out pretty good here. And you can see here, just for example, this little bit of the arm that's showing right here, see how it's lighter on this side of the arm? And then where it meets the back, it just rolls into a little bit of shadow and then it's the hard edge again. So I need to make sure, and I'll go over, I'll do this through a number of steps, but I need to make sure it's lighter on this side, rolling into shadow, and then it gets light again, right here like that. And that's gonna help make it look like the back is like kind of passing in front of that arm that's tucked in, uh, in front of it. Maybe chisel some of this back out. I think that'll really help define. Oh yeah, this is gonna help define this edge just a little bit better. And the cool thing about erasers, you can like erase these like cool shapes and stuff into there just to like, you know, kind of keep it artsy and add pizzazz. You know, part of it is, it is a drawing. So you want it to be realistic, kind of like a photo, but at the same time, if all you do is make it look like a photo, where's the art of it all? Part of what makes art art is having that humanistic touch and having the little spritzes and little textures and grit and uh, that human touch, you know? It's kind of the funny thing about digital art, and don't get me wrong, I love digital art, I'm not, I'm not bagging on it at all, but the funny thing about it, a lot of times the best digital art that you find, digital artists, which are great, and I'm actually doing more and more digital art uh, as time goes on, and I have a lot of fun with it. But a lot of times you're just trying so hard to make it not look so digital and to kind of bring that humanistic touch to it. This is good for this step. Now I'm going to go back and I need to give this a little bit more punch. So I am going to grab my charcoal again. In fact, I'm gonna grab, this is called charcoal, compressed charcoal, but this is like this giant tube. This is not gonna give me any kind of accuracy whatsoever, but it's nice and dark and it's just gonna, look at that. It's like, just when you thought all these areas were dark, nope, that's nothing compared to breaking out the big guns. And this is just gonna help set some darker values to what we got going on. Look how much more contrast that is just pumping this up with. I'm gonna do what I kind of did the first time and I am going to smooth out. All right. All right, you missed a spot. Oh, I'm <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm going to take a new expensive chamois here, courtesy of Costco, and I'm gonna smooth out some of these darker charcoal areas. In a way, I'm kind of smearing it around, but I'm, I'm trying to, it's, I'm kind of controlling where it is. I'm pressing it into the paper so that if I do accidentally brush against it, it's kind of already pressed into the general area I want it to be. I'm still gonna erase more areas and I'm still gonna go back in and draw more details, but it's just getting closer and closer to the overall value that I want it to be. And these darks are really, I mean, it's just now, it's really starting to get that really cool, like it's really starting to pop and see how I can kind of smooth this right here. It kind of has this sharp edge, 
but kind of going alongside it, I'm able to kind of roll it into that shadow. Nice. Totally rolling into that shadow now. Just what I wanted for Christmas. Nice. It's this nice and dark here. It's closer. It's, it's a little more loose now and I got, it's a little too soft, but value wise, it's really starting to get punchy. So now that I added darks, I'm gonna go back and kind of erase out a little bit again. Now, instead of using my kneaded eraser, this time I am going to use, this is the Mars white plastic eraser. And right now this thing has so much charcoal dust on it. It looks black. It's normally like this kind of long uh, white brick like this. But what you can do right now, all the edges are kind of a little bit soft and nubby. If you take it and if you cut off a cheese slice, you can see how white it is on the inside. And now you've got these really sharp edges you can use to erase. And you can use the sharp edges on this Velveeta craft uh, single right here. So you've got this little piece too that can be handy. This little piece here is really good for Look at that, it's erasing like razor Ooh. highlights. And this is really cool because I can use the edge of this. It's a good place to use the edge of this. Let's say right here, along the nose. And now it's just like this razor sharp. I can really chisel out edges. Some of this got a little lost some of those highlights here, but I can go back and really chisel out. Just get awesome edge control where I can have it chiseled where I want it to be. I can have hard edges where I want them and I can have soft edges where I would like them. I'm do some more fun stuff with this. Okay, plastic eraser, pretty cool. Yeah, but again, uh, I mentioned before, when you use the, if you don't use the kneaded eraser first, mm -hmm. you kind of need the kneaded eraser to kind of get the basics off, and then anything the kneaded eraser doesn't do, this thing is just gonna take care of it and blast the rest of it away. But if you just go in with this, this thing is gonna get so clogged up with uh, charcoal that it almost starts just pushing charcoal around. Uh, so, um, you the last slice cheese. Yeah, you need to kind of, you need to do one before you do the other. I was gonna say hair areas, let's just call them areas. So what I'm going to do now, I need to chisel out some of the darks a little bit, but it's coming together. It's looking good from a distance. Like if I squint my eyes, it's like, oh man, it's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to take it back to where it first started and I'm going to go in with my trusted charcoal pencil. Let me hammer out some details that I haven't had in there yet. So now I can kind of get some additional Kind of darker areas going in, some specific darks. Get that eyebrow in now a little bit better. So there's these crazy hairs. I'm almost nervous to do these because I almost feel like it's going to ruin it. But here we go. Not so bad. And then 
this is all pretty dark here. So the ear here is definitely darker than this little pocket of the ear under here. There's this little earring here, little cast shadow on the side of it here. There's an earring. Little one here, here's the ball of the earring, and then... So here we can kind of see under, and it's a little bit darker. It's a little bit darker over here. Well, wow, basically formed by shadow. Yeah. And then with the eraser, I'm going to pull out the highlights, it's going to look even better. I cannot believe that one cast shadow basically formed that stud. Also some select hairs that are just kind of pulled out here. Kind of help give the illusion that it's hair and it's not, not perfect. So I'm gonna add this crazy necklace I think. I'm gonna use for some crazy details, I'm gonna use an electric eraser, and I think in my lifetime I've used an electric eraser once that I borrowed from someone, and I actually have one, and I haven't had a chance to use it, so I, I may ruin this, or I may fix this, I have no idea what's gonna happen. I need to... chisel out a little more here, I need to chisel out a little bit above the brow. This under here, it's just, it's not as dark and it's not as high. So I can kind of much better. And then, it's just kind of swing this around on the neck. So now I am going to have fun and look at this. Oh my gosh. It's an electric eraser. I think these are like 12 bucks. They're battery powered and <laughs> so it's got this little eraser that just spins in there and when you push the button, you can just erase out these little hairline details. So let's play. What is it going to do? I'm nervous. Oh, all right. Woohoo. Whoa. I lost control. I think I'm gonna use this just for some hot spot areas. Here, needs to be a little stronger here. But it, it erases light. It'll, it'll pull it right back out. Nice. Get those nice little highlights. Oh, this will be cool for the earring. One area that I thought might be cool. So it's a little blunt, it's a little crayon-like. I guess you could sharpen it or you could use a different, um, you can get different nubbies and different tips. What I wanted to do, see if this works, is what would happen if I... Ooh. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Did you enjoy class today? If so, give me a like. If there's something you'd like to see me cover in a future video, let me know what that is in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I've also got a video series called Sketchbook Challenge that helps your drawing, creativity, and fill up an awesome looking sketchbook. Plus, there are videos on You Can Draw Star Wars, Hollywood is Dead, and sneak peeks at the Aladdin 3477 Motion Picture Trilogy. In order to not miss any new videos, hit that notification bell. Sharing is caring, and it's great to inspire your friends. Share this video on social media, and your friends will share awesome art tips they find with you. If you're on Instagram, you can follow me at Matt underscore Bush underscore Instagram. I'll see you back in the classroom soon. Don't be tardy.